Good afternoon and welcome to the Monday Noontide. I'm Heidi Thompson, your Legacy Lifeguard with Lifeguarding Legacies. And today on the Monday Noontide, we have the privilege of welcoming Michael Shoemaker, who will share all kinds of marketing tips that will help us for our businesses, no matter where you are or what you're working on in your profession. Michael, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show today. Heidi, thank you so much for, for taking the time to speak with me. No problem. So Michael, tell us a little about yourself. Absolutely. Um, so I am a business and salesperson. I've got a diverse portfolio of where I've worked and industries that I've worked in. And most recently, I found myself in the digital marketing niche for attorneys uh, based in California. Um, I have a variety of, of experience, but I wanted to focus solely on attorneys just because I think they are the ones that need the most help when it comes to digital marketing. And then that's we where I We do our own way, don't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Fantastic. So, um, so tell me, which form of marketing is really the most helpful if we're trying to get out there and generate leads? Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, there's a there's a variety of marketing tools and, and forms that can be effective for every single company, whether they would be an attorney or, or not, whether it's a law firm or selling a product, selling a service. There's about seven to eight different forms of marketing that can all be extremely beneficial. So the primary one that we do is Google pay-per-click, which is Google marketing, putting ads onto Google, people click on. There's SEO, which is creating content via blogs on websites that generate eyeballs to the website. There's content marketing, which is if the website or the company has a LinkedIn profile or a Twitter profile, just kind of generating content to be in conversations, to get conversations going. There's email marketing. There's straight up cold call marketing. There's referral based network marketing. I mean, it really, it goes on and on and on and and really, if we kind of took a, a deeper dive into the Google pay-per-click, which is what I do, um, essentially, it is the number one effective way to generate leads for law firms. And this is the part that I like to start a conversation off with an attorney because most attorneys think they have everything figured out. And even though they are extremely good at what they do, whether they're five years out of uh, out of law school or whether they're, they have 30 years of experience, generally they have a semi successful business in regards to they're making the bills every single month and they're able to play with the surplus. But a lot of attorneys don't necessarily understand the way that consumers in the market has changed. And for example, I guess we're going down a rabbit hole here, but I love I love examples and I love analogies. Um, one of my attorneys that I, I spoke with last week, he spends about ten grand a month on billboard ads, Ooh. and that's another form of marketing, by the way. Right? It's it's a not a way to generate leads, but it's a way to generate a larger brand and a, a help establish a brand. And he's spending ten grand a month on ad, on uh, billboard ads, and I asked him, well, how many leads does that brought you? And it just complete go silence. And I said, you know, obviously it's great to establish brand, but he's a starting attorney. He doesn't have a lot of funds to be to be spending. And, and I told him that's not the most efficient way to get the most bang for your buck. That's obviously step five out of a, a 10 step plan, but he was trying to do it step number one. And until, and he, he mentioned this to me and, and until he mentioned this to me, I don't think he knew himself, but in his mind, just because he's paying for a billboard lead should be falling into his accounts. And they weren't, and he didn't necessarily connect the two to two dots in his head. And, and that's okay. Right. And that's what I kind of established myself with him as is, Hey, I offer this digital service, but I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just here to help make you more money. And, and in his case, it was just hearing the blunt fact of stop signing contracts to pay for $10,000 a month billboards when do something different to start getting leads and flowing into his firm. And I mean, it's only been a week and, and he's already said that, okay, his mindset has changed. I shared a couple articles with him and a book that he should read. And, you know, and it's not necessarily me telling him he was wrong. It's me understanding, okay, you have a great reputation in your exact city. Now we need to capitalize on it by starting leads falling into your account and building brand. Um, Cause they're two different things. Got it. So I mean, so you're really in the digital marketing space. Yes, ma'am. 
And so what would you, what makes up digital marketing? What is it exactly? Thank you for asking that. Cause it's, it's a very, very broad term, just digital marketing, digital marketer, um, marketing online, right? So there's a few different sub industries inside digital marketing. I mentioned earlier, I'm in the Google pay-per-click industry. Um, there's the SEO, search engine optimization, which is they're the top two, uh, but they essentially are both at great at collecting people from a search bar such as Google engine and routing them to your website. And so that's the number one way to get people either their attention or their money when it comes to marketing is going to be from routing people through Google, through a search funnel, and then onto your website. Um, and to, to kind of take a deeper dive between the two, because I think a lot of people loop SEO and pay-per-click together. And it really, it's, it's two different things like left and right side of the brain, right? They, they knock out two separate tasks for a company. Google pay-per-click, uh, PPC essentially, right? Knocks out leads. If you have a great Google pay-per-click strategy or you're paying a third-party firm or you've hired an internal person, they should be bringing leads every single month in a predictable fashion via ads on Google that people click on, right? But a search engine optimization strategy, again, separate than pay-per-click, is a company that is just really mass producing effective blogs. And that's the harder part because Google pay-per-click, once you turn it on, it's instant lead flow, but search engine optimization can take four to seven months. And it's hard because search engine optimization should cost more than pay-per-click, but when you don't see that instant gratification that, okay, now my investment's starting to make money, it makes it a lot harder for someone who's barely making ends meet to wanna invest in that. So that's what we always say, go Google pay-per-click first. And potentially it might be worth hiring an outside firm to do it because it's the same way with, I, I, for me personally, I only buy shoes that fit and feel great on my feet, right? So I can go buy, I like ultra boost, like $200 shoes, but they're so comfy that at the end of a day, when I'm on my feet all day, I know my feet won't hurt. But if you go buy Fila's or something cheaper, for example, right? They may look good. They may be stylish, but at the end of the day, when your feet hurt, you're not getting the most quality for your product. And that's what I, that's what I try to relate it to when it comes to both search engine optimization and pay-per-click is if it's cheap, it's not going to be a good product. And ultimately, I mean, for yourself, Heidi, you, you own your own firm, right? So if you were to pay for something that would be the most beneficial for you, would you hope that it brings in leads or would you want to be building brand? Well, ideally you need to do both, but leads are more important than brand. Right. I mean, so you're, step you're, one is lead. Step two is brand. But yes, correct. so you get yeah. it right. And and, well, that's and, why and your mentioned. leads are going to build your brand. Exactly. Exactly. And brand, the brand is a part of the equation. It's just not step one. And I try to, you know, when I'm educating attorneys and I don't think I necessarily know everything, right? I just might know one or two more things more than someone I'm speaking with. And it's, okay, we have to establish, do you know what brand is? Okay, cool. What's your brand? A lot of attorneys don't even have a brand yet. So I'm like, so why are you advertising for brand or why are you spending your hard earned money on brand when you don't even have an identified brand that you can you know, verbally tell me? Um, but it's a, it's a fun game because again, uh, attorneys are very, very, very smart. And so when I'm speaking with an attorney, they're extremely more knowledgeable when it comes to law and maybe even making money for their firm, they just are missing that one or two extra step regarding, okay, how do we make ourselves more profitable? And it's usually through the, the proper form of marketing. That makes sense to me. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so how would I know if my digital marketing company is really working for me? Comes down to a few different things. So I always tell people, so most attorneys or most business people are loyal when it comes to their servicers or, or their providers. So you never want to jeopardize that loyalty aspect that's been built, especially over a few years. But what I would suggest is you, most business people are being hounded by digital marketers. It's a very busy and it's an overwhelming experience for business owners that I've come to find out. And, and, and you know, if you open your LinkedIn inbox, I guarantee you there's 15 messages you know, one or two a week that constantly flow through, hey, let me, let me do your digital marketing, let me advertise for you. And so it's a, it's a crowded industry and I wouldn't just say, start saying yes to people. Um, but I would say, you know, reach out to a, a firm or, cause it, 
involving research for yourself for most of my my attorneys they're very busy they don't they're not going to have a couple hours a week to research themselves but i would say reach out to a firm that's accredited or maybe a referral from one of your fellow business owners that they're working with and just get an account audit and account audits are free at least they should be don't pay for one account audits should be free but it's the only way to really check to make sure that your um, digital advertising, your digital marketing is going to be the most bang for your buck. And without me getting too technical regarding the technical jargons that you need to look for and watch out for, it's not that. It's reach out to another professional and just make sure that the person you're working with is doing a good job. Because for digital marketing to work, it's not like turn on the lights and walk away. It's hour or two max, or excuse me, not max, minimum. It's an hour or two minimum a day of playing in Google's algorithms to make sure that that brand or that business is getting the most efficient bang for their buck. And, and oftentimes they're not, but because the business owner is not necessarily an expert when it comes to leads or digital marketing overall, they think they're getting a good deal. In reality, they're just being played from a firm that's either too large to focus on them or too small to have expertise. And, and so that's what I would suggest is just really make sure that you're getting the most for your buck. That makes sense to me. So if people, people like me, we're always looking for what are those little fine tuned things we can do to fix things up, right? Right. So if we can make three small changes that would have the biggest impact, what would you suggest? So it depends on time, depends on personnel. Um, but the number one thing that I had previously prepped for this is just content. Um, you're doing a wonderful job at creating additional ways for people to come across your profile, your brand. And I would suggest that to other people too. And I'm not saying take 30 minutes every single Monday to interview someone to, you know, generate that brand, but I'm saying just whatever niche you're in. And again, for me, it's, it's attorney. So I like to speak to attorneys because that's what I know best, know best, but bankruptcy, if you're a bankruptcy attorney, you know, the laws, you know, what's changing, you know, what's about to change. There was just an election, you know, what could potentially come up next, right? Like, so you're the expert, share your expertise blogs, videos, um, on your LinkedIn, just turn on your camera, share 30, 30 seconds, right? Whatever you need to do, just continually build that brand aspects so that if anyone comes across your content, they'll know that, okay, I can reach out to this person for this problem. Instant way to get additional leads. Number two, email marketing base. So for most attorneys, they have the email addresses of their previous clients, or they have email addresses of people who've reached out to fill out a referral sheet online. Put them into a CRM, some sort of automated email marketing firm. And it's not necessarily reaching out to these people for their services, it's just reaching out to share information, right? They've hopefully already used you or at least are interested in using your services. So just continually reach out once a week, twice a week. Hey, like, and it's a, it's a mass blast, right? You're not writing individual emails, but it's, hey, you know, this bankruptcy rule just changed. I don't know if it's going to affect yours. You know, we worked together in the past. I wanted to make sure you were aware of it or just share an article, but consistently stay in front of these people. And, and I keep saying bankruptcy in particular, right? Hopefully most people don't have multiple bankruptcies, but you might have a, a friend who said, I'm about to file, who do you reach out to, right? Like it's, it's forever it's forever ending and regarding the amount of people that you can help. So just make sure that you are in front of them as much as possible, just sharing great information. And third, I have continue trying to get to continue trying to get creative regarding the leads that you're bringing in, right? It's it, as we are continually growing as a society, now that COVID has adjusted how we all interact with each other, just never stop investing in yourself and in your business on how to increase profits. And that's obviously through advertisement, but that could be through customer service. That could be through, you know, just kind of understanding the newest trends regarding your industry, because once you know that opportunities are endless, just never stop trying. Good advice. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Michael, anything Absolutely. else you want to leave us with or is that as we wrap up here? I, I don't necessarily do, um, but I, I would just like to pay, piggyback on the last thing I said, just it can be easy to get complacent, whether you make $100,000 a month or whether you make 10 or even $1,000 a month, it's easy to be complacent, but work extremely hard to continue getting new ideas, to continue networking, to continue asking the most recent person you just fulfilled services with, ask how you, you can improve on your techniques. Right. Okay. That simple question 
can help both help you improve, but it also shows that customer, okay, this person's been in service for 15 years and they're still trying to improve, right? Now, all of a sudden, when they are asked by a colleague or a family member, you're going to be the one that gets referred simply because you cared. And that's, that's what I'd like to end with is just care about your clients because and it, COVID-19 has taught us that, you know, our, our money and the way we spend our money is valuable and we don't necessarily always spend it with just one person if we are getting great referrals and leads from our friends to use someone else. So just be aware of that. Relationships are everything. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, Michael, thank you so much for those great tips. I know um, I know a lot of business people out there will appreciate that insight and so will my attorney friends. Um, and uh, I, I'm just really glad you were here and, and were willing to share with us. So of course, uh, that was our Monday Noontide episode for November 16th. I'm Heidi Thompson, your legacy lifeguard with Lifeguarding Legacies. I do help people with wills and trusts to make sure that what they've worked for their, for their entire lives does glow flawlessly to the people they love and the causes that they care about. I also help people plan for the horrible things like incapacity, needing to provide for guardianship and some of those other what ifs. So you pay me to be worried for you and think of all those scenarios so that everything goes the way that you would want it to go. Um, and then I ideally, you know, your lifeguard just keeps you out of those scary waters. So mm -hmm. Michael, again, thanks so much for being on here. Um, oh, one question, Michael, how would people reach you if they wanted to um, email and phone? Absolutely. So I, I would say most likely LinkedIn is where I'm most active, but uh, email always works. And it's going to be Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L at lawyermediagroup.org. Uh, Michael at lawyermediagroup.org. That's the best way to, to reach me. It's hard to miss emails. I miss phone calls all the time. <laughs> Okay, got it. All right. Well, thanks so much. And, and to reach me, you can reach me at my website, lifeguardinglegacies.com, info at lifeguardinglegacies.com, or calling me on 602-529-1827. And I will see you next week on the Monday Noontide. Thanks so much.